So welcome back to the third episode, number three, the right episode of the UX Kitchen. And today we are going to continue designing our tool Trackerly, and now we are going to create some actual sketches. Okay, so I have these two uh, pieces of information which are going to be useful. One, I have our original functionality map, and we have one of one part of the user flow, which would um, see the dashboard, pad profile, and stuff like that. So I'm going to use these two to start sketching the actual, you know, like first screens. I want to start by sketching out how the sign up flow looks like, how uh, you can add the new pad, okay? So what do I know about the sign up? I know that I have to enter my name, email address, and a password. Obviously, I can navigate to the login page. Uh, I have this very simple, very straightforward sign up, which consists of, you know, like entering my email name. I mean, you can switch the order, obviously. Um, I have the password. It's an interesting idea of whether you want to have like two password fields so you can validate that they're um, entering the same password twice um, or you just uh, keep it simple. Obviously, then I have the sign up button and I have a way to navigate to the login screen. I want to set up a new pad. I know that I can specify a name for my pad, a profile picture, um, what else? Yeah, obviously the, the type of pad, so cat, dog, fish, uh, I can specify the color and the sex. So let's see how it will look like. I have more information that I can fit on this screen. So what I want to do is I want to break it down into multiple steps. But my question is, how do I want to um, display the, the type selection? my concept, I would show the types more visually, so you know, like dog, cat, fish, whatever. And then when you choose one of the types, then this part would, you know, like um, collapse and I would only show the dog or, you know, like the, the type that you selected. And then I can show the additional fields, uh, maybe a bit scrolling down as well. So then I can select the breed, I can, uh, I can select, you know, like it's a boy or a girl. I mean, for spiders, I don't know. I don't know, let's, let's stick to dog. I added these two small circles to indicate that there's gonna be another page that you, you know, have to um, fill it in with information before you could complete the process. And then I can keep everything on, on one page. So far, I only added navigation that pushes you forward in the process. But what if at this point I want to go back uh, because, I don't know, I messed up the, the name of my dog or, or I forget to upload a picture. Most of the time, I'm right behind that navigation should be always easily accessible. If I put it uh, at the top, it's, it's with one hand, it's very hard to tap on. And 49% of the users are using their phones with one hand. In this case, I could still have the back navigation on the top because I want the users to go on with the process. Now, the next thing is setting up the VET connection. What I know about VETs is obviously I have to educate the users why it's good to them to set up the VET connection. 
because setting up the connection, it's very easy. I just have to enter the name, uh, the email address, and the phone number of the vet. Maybe I, c I have a syncing option, but uh, let's save it for later, okay? first like a pitch screen uh, to inform the users about this vet connection thing because at this point they might not realize why it's good to them to set this connection up so what I have is I, I can have like an illustration or a nice picture you know like referring to the vet uh, and I want to explain why it's good. So syncing the data, they can uh, have emergency calls and, and whatever uh, it can do to you. And I can choose whether to set it up now or uh, save it for later. And so let's say I'm setting it up now, which means that I want to enter my, uh, the name of the vet, uh, the email address and the phone number. I have this interesting uh, like addition to it, which is like sending health data on a regular basis, like a weekly basis, monthly basis, whatever. I mean, this is a product related question, uh, but it would be a nice thing to have. And I can switch on or off the syncing, okay? And obviously I can move forward or I can move backward from this screen. Then as a last step to the onboarding process, I wanna connect uh, my smart caller, well not mine, the dogs obviously, uh, to the actual app. So let's, let's uh, recap what we know about this. Um, I want to inform the users about the option that they can uh, connect to the device. Uh, obviously at this point, um, if, if the app could handle multiple devices, I have to select a certain device or I just uh, want to do that like fully automatic. Let's, let's uh, stick to this one. So let's say that they're like two or three devices, but through the Bluetooth, if the smart caller is on, if the app is running, I will see it somehow. have my two screens and in the first screen I inform the user about the smart caller I also give hints on you know like instructions so what do you have to do in order to make it work I have to turn on the device obviously I have to uh, check the Bluetooth connection so it's up and running if everything is cool then it will automatically show me the device that I can pair it with I have this help it doesn't work uh, and because that would lead you to the troubleshooting which uh, brings me to the topic of microcopy use a very straightforward and friendly language so instead of saying troubleshooting or you know like whatever jargon you might use just just go for the the, the obvious one obviously I can navigate back but this is pretty much it then I can uh, I can show a success page after that. Okay, it's a successful uh, pairing and after that I'm good to go and I arrive in the dashboard. I have my pet set up. I have my account set up. I have my vet connection up and running and I, uh, I paired it with the device. This was it for this episode and next week we're going to continue our designs and, and continue sketching out more interfaces and going to digital design. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, then let me know uh, in the comment section below. Please subscribe and don't miss out on the next episode. And if you didn't see the first one, I mean the previous episodes, then it's pretty much here please click on this and you can check it out so you are up to date. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any comments and see you all later.